Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan City Park Board meeting of September 18th, 2019. If you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Shannon, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Latchford? Here. Mr. Freeze? Here. Mr. Lang? Here. Ms. Espar? Here. The minutes of our August 21st, 2019 uh, meeting were presented prior to the meeting, so unless there are any corrections, additions, do we have a motion to approve? So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll move right into old business and some project updates. Jeremy? Thank you. Uh, regarding the ESG project, um, the change order was approved through the City Council for the sport lighting. I believe uh, Shannon did report on that last meeting. Um, all we are waiting on right now is just a date that they're going to be out there to begin. Um, so it's just um, moving forward with that. So hoping in the next uh, couple weeks because they're planning on being completely out of here by the end of October is what they're telling us. So um, we're hopefully going to see them start soon, mobilize and start soon and get that project completed at Patriot. Um, all of the solar is coming along, uh, specifically at Patriot. They're moving right along with that. Um, Senior Center is still kind of at a little bit of a standstill while we wait, um, or at least I haven't seen um, any of the drawings or mock-ups for the to enclose the um, conduit um, and put up a fence. So I haven't seen any drawings or uh, material list for that. Um, so we do meet again next Tuesday. Um, so I will hopefully be able to report something to the board after that, if not before. And then the uh, vehicle GPS tracking um, uh, program has been uh, has begun, um, and we're, we have a handful of, of our vehicles, our park vehicles that have been completed. Um, but then, I, from my understanding, I learned today that they are short on parts, so we're now they're now waiting for more parts to, to come in for those um, tracking systems, and then so they can continue. Um, and that does conclude um, that aspect of the report. Be happy to answer any questions specifically to that one before we move on to the next one. Any questions? Uh, well, not necessarily <coughs> that, but for the uh, senior center, we're having some extensive work done there in the future. Is that going to be closed for a period of time? It will potentially, yes, if we can get to the next step. So I'm still working. We're still working through some of that, um, um, and hopefully, um, what what you are referencing is interior renovation of the senior center. Um, yes, and we are uh, we've received a proposal and are reviewing that from Hudson Associates now, um, and hopefully, hoping by your next meeting, <coughs> excuse me, I'll have that proposal in front of you um, to potentially move forward on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Jeremy, I've got just a couple. Uh, the purpose for the GPS monitoring in our vehicles. Do you, uh, can you help explain what the purpose is? Yeah, so that's uh, to help just, again, if we want to monitor any of our of our employees, where they're going, um, where they've been, how long they've been at certain locations. I believe it's also to, um, it can even tell, like, how long a vehicle is idling. Um, you know, the hopes is, again, energy savings, um, hopefully fuel savings. Um, so it's kind of looking at some of that, if we can be more efficient in our approach and our throughout our workday. It's kind of gathering that data. It'll probably be more over time, if you sure. will, um, but hopefully in the future we'll, we'll see some benefits from that. But that's my understanding of why it's being installed. Sounds good. And then I noticed two concrete pads poured out in front of the Michigan City Senior Center. And what's going on there? Uh, we received a grant uh, to put a couple new benches in. Great. Um, some time ago, um, and we're finally getting around to it. So we're just waiting for that, um, the concrete to properly cure, cure um, and then we will be installing those con uh, those uh, benches. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as far as our second uh, project update, uh, we have representation here from Crumlish and Crumlish um, that they would like to uh, uh, approach the board this evening and give you an update on the old Lighthouse Museum project and uh, talk us through that. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, I'm Brendan Crumlish, president of Crumlish and Crumlish Architect. With me tonight is my associate, Kurt Garner, uh, and we've been working on the, uh, the documents uh, for the 
the window and exterior renovation. I, I think you all have received copies of that. Uh, what I'd like to do is maybe take five minutes and just turn the pages with you, and then you can ask me some questions, and then I'll uh, discuss the cost estimate that we put together for maybe another five minutes, and we can talk about that. That would be great. Uh, <coughs> we have a cover sheet. Uh, just indicating the documents, the list of uh, drawings that we prepared. Uh, the next two sheets, A1 and A2, are diagrammatic floor plans drawn to scale uh, that we've created uh, through measurements. Uh, I, I won't vouch for a high degree of accuracy on the interior. We, we kind of sketch those out quickly. But here we locate all the windows that are in question and we identify them uh, alphabetically uh, so we can uh, address them later on. Uh, the A1 is the basement and then the main level entry plan. Uh, A2 is the second floor as you come up the staircases and there's a series of windows there on the second floor. Uh, we're trying to gray out the walls to draw emphasis that this is just a window project. And then on the right we have the attic and the base of the cupola there. Uh, there are two attic windows there. And we've got some graphic notes indicating some of the other accessory work that will be a part of it. Turn to page A3. Uh, we've ident identified the two uh, accessory buildings, the oil house and the storage building, uh, as needing some repairs. I'm telling you now we're listing these as an alternate bid because when we talk about the cost you'll see uh, we're going to use most of it on the windows entirely. Uh, but we do, we do break out the work items, uh, mostly tuck pointing on the oil house, I think repairing some of the steel hinges on the doors, uh, a, list, uh, a description of the work, and then the storage building also, it's uh, some repairs to some of the trim on that building. Uh, not really extensive. Page four are the two ends of the building, north and south. Uh, and now you see a flat view, an elevation of, of not only the lighthouse, but each individual window, uh, again, graphically represented A, B, C, D, uh, key back to that plan. Uh, we've got some notes. We do identify some doors, though the doors, there's only one door we're actually going to be working on, and that's that uh, replacement storm door on the uh, entry uh, shed on the bottom. Uh, we have uh, a list of all the windows here, uh, what they look like, little diagrams, and, and a brief description of what has to be done to these. Uh, I, I will note to you, and you're probably all familiar with this, uh, in this you see uh, some arch top windows. That's, that's all trim. That, those are not glazed uh, arches. If you turn the page to A5, which shows, I, I guess, what we would call the front of the lighthouse, the uh, second floor center window there, that is an arched window. So that, that is glazing. Uh, the rest, it's all just in the trim work. So again, this identifies um, the, the various pieces and parts uh, as seen uh, from the outside. Turning page A6, we have our uh, preservation specifications that the contractors will need to follow. Uh, we identify work for masonry and masonry joint restoration. That's for the alternate uh, on the oil house. Uh, we have repair work for the windows uh, and painting work for both the windows and other items on the building. We're missing a short section on some trim repairs and we'll get that in uh, and that will probably complete the specifications, the architectural specifications that will be necessary for the contractors. Uh, uh, the last two sheets, we added these as a reference, originally thinking this would help the State Historic Preservation Office uh, understand the thing, if they could see graphically and photographically how it looks. Uh, we may as well include these for the, uh, the contractors bidding it. it. It helps give them a quick overview of the different pieces and parts, so there's a little description of the photos. You're all familiar with it, but then you can match these up to the plans that we put together. Uh, we are ready to submit these to the uh, Indiana Department of Historic Preservation and Archaeology State Historic Preservation Office. We have a letter drafted uh, to submit to them tomorrow. Uh, if you'd like to ask me questions now about the drawings, you may. 
or I can proceed to talk about the cost estimate. Any questions currently? We can go back and forth. Why don't you proceed then? Okay, thank you. So, uh, we met with Shannon and Jeremy about three weeks ago, and we talked about putting together, you know, a bid package for all of the work. The grant is primarily for the windows. So, we created what I'm calling the base bid, which is everything that's related to the windows themselves, uh, including the pilaster capitals and the one storm door uh, that are being repaired. And I'll talk you through those in a minute. But after talking to Shannon and Jeremy, um, we were concerned that even several weeks ago this might breach the budget. So I said, what can we do with all the other incidental items that were identified to us? Painting some trim, painting porches, storm windows, things like that, the tuck pointing. So we broke those seven items out as ad alternates that you could choose at the bid opening to say, hey, we'll take item, one, uh, item nine and item 12 or something like that uh, to suit the budget that, that you have to work with. So if I look at the base bid, uh, the first thing we have, general conditions, this is contractors mobilization, scaffolding, things like that. It's sort of overhead costs, but it's project specific uh, that we estimate they would need to just uh, come to the job and get started. Item number two is the window repairs themselves. We went through a careful examination of all the windows and compared costs from other projects we've been familiar with in the last year or two and um, worked out some prices for all of these and added it up. Um, that includes taking out the sash, uh, taking them to a contractor's shop to do shop repairs, reglazing, puttying, scraping, replacing hardware, weights, rope, sash, shop painting the sash uh, in, in a nice uh, indoor situation, then coming back and reinstalling all of these items into the openings. Beyond that, we also identified window trim repair, both on the exterior and the interior. Most of the damage is evident on the exterior, uh, but Perhaps in handling and removal, some trim might get broken on the inside, so we thought it would be cautious to put a little money aside for that. Um, we then looked at uh, field painting of the window trim. This is all the flat trim, the casings and so forth, and the elaborate arches that, if they're not in need of uh, shop repair, they would remain on the building and just have to be painted in place. So there's painting set aside for that. Uh, we also have, there's two small missing capitals on some uh, pilasters that need to be replaced and a new storm door on that uh, lower lean-to. Uh, and to that, then we finally add a general contractor's overhead and markup, uh, overhead and profit as a markup on top of this at 10%. That's our projection at this time. Um, the, the work by a specialty contractor, it, this could be done mostly by a specialty window contractor, but if we start looking at some of these other alternates, other trades get involved, and perhaps a general contractor is the one that would most likely coordinate all that and then uh, deserve their overhead and profit on top of that. Looking at the alternates, we have the new storm windows. I'll explain why that's an alternate in a minute. Uh, a, new, a new curved gutter was suggested on the east porch, the round porch. Then we also have field painting of other miscellaneous exterior trim that's on the building that's not the windows. There's some standing and running trim, eaves and overhangs and things um, that are not the correct color as we understand it. And now would be the time to kind of unify the building under one color uh, scheme. Uh, field painting the porches, we broke that out as a separate alternate, um, just to see what that would be. Um, we have tuck pointing shown for the oil house. Here I've indicated this would be the cost of tuck point 100% of the joints. Um, we could discuss this with the State Preservation Office. It's been my genuine experience in 30 years of tuck pointing. When you do it piecemeal, it looks spotty. Um, the best way to do it would be to do 100% of the joints and get a uniform finish to it. 
we don't have to do it that way. We could we could bid it as a uh, unit price and say how much per square foot to do so many. Then there's some incidental repair uh, to the uh, workshop, and then the last little item was replacing the finial at the top of the lighthouse, and we are. Uh, we've been directed that it is not to be a lightning rod. It is not to uh, serve as that purpose. Uh, they just want a fiberglass one up there. And then to that, if we took all of those alternates together, that would give us another uh, markup of overhead and profit for a general contractor. And last but not least, we'd like to suggest uh, perhaps 10% uh, contingency for things that you just don't know and things come apart and can't go back together again. So if we combine the base bid and the alternate, all the alternates, we come up with a project of 186800 which we, we know that is beyond the, the grant money that's available, but at least we, could, we have a way to get there and find out, and it leaves room uh, for any future funding to come to that. That's it. Martin, I have a question. Can sure. you kind of walk us through the process of when the contractor removes the windows, what's happening with the openings? Well, our expectation is they'll want to take them back to their shop to do the work. So they'll need to put plywood over and secure secure the opening that's, that's left behind. If this work begins late this year, which would be great for a contractor to take the, the windows off-site to a shop, either here in Michigan City or Kokomo or someplace like that, uh, and the building is not being used over the winter, so that would give us, you know, a time frame that they could enclose the building. It'd be safe, you know, pigeon-proof, vandal-proof. So just plywood or plywood. tie back over the outside for we waterproofing? Could, we could do that, yeah. It's, it's denoted in the key notes and okay. the specs as well. The insulating and Sure. Any other questions um, from the board? If, you want to, if you want to ask about the curved gutter, that was a really difficult one to estimate. We finally found a sheet metal company that would give us a bid, and there's probably a reason there was never a gutter on that building, because curving half-round gutter is virtually impossible. They could do it in you know little segments of 12 inches, and it would look pretty funny. But uh, there's a company in California that would custom cast one uh, if we gave them dimensions. They said they would make a mold, and they would do it. And that's $10,000. So, I was you, wondering you, when I tried to cut it about 10000 Yeah, it's, they have to, custom. it's a custom build, and we only need one. <laughs> so... It's uh, it, it's kind of expensive, but that's on there. Um, oh, I said something about the aluminum, uh, the the storm windows. The state has indicated from all investigations so far that storm windows were never authentic on this building. The wooden ones that are there, we understand, was a community donation 40, 50 years ago, and it's uh, kind of a hodgepodge. Well, it's a good thing. Uh, storm windows do protect windows. Um, so our intent would be to put a very narrow edged aluminum modern replacement window kind of as a cover over this after we've spent this money to get these windows back in shape. It would be a shame to let Mother Nature take her course on this again. We envision these as being fixed, not something you'd remove. We understand from the museum they don't open the windows, so there wouldn't be any need to do that. And Kurt, we understand that the, the state is going to kind of say, yeah, okay, no comment. We, we know they're a necessity, but we're not requiring them. So we made that an alternate bid. As you see, it's $11,000. You know, be probably one of the first ones we recommend. Other than the first one, is there a priority list that you would recommend the other alternates? Not really. I, I just kind of went through and I started estimating this and that, and that, that's sort of where they fell. I think I, I looked at the storm windows first because I was looking at windows and I said, well, let's figure out what those might cost. But. So if I can comment on that too, um, like our preference would be that all the field painting would get completed, so mm -hmm. the aesthetics of the building. Yeah, that would kind of unify the whole unified, experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then some of the smaller um, repairs we think could be handled in-house or through a volunteer program. So I'm pretty confident that we can get most of this work done one way or another. I can see where the storm wind goes. As you said, to spend that kind of money and that would not yeah. ever would be yeah. ludicrous. If it was my house, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs>
So, yes, I agree with you. Mr. Uh, Carlos, excuse me. Thanks for coming today. Okay. I appreciate the approach that you went through right. with us tonight, and Thank you. I like uh, that you identified all the areas needing remediation, and not maybe yeah. just what was initially uh, spec'd out. Okay. I like the collaboration that you went through to come okay. to this point, and your budget consciousness. And then breaking the RFP out to match that budget, right. budget consciousness. So thank you right. very much for those efforts. President Latchford, could I just ask if the Historical Society has any comments? I was just going to go there, but thank you for reminding me. Yeah, any questions from the public? <laughs> Either microphone, please, and just state your... Yeah, they record this, so it's hard to hear unless you're on the microphone. Good afternoon. Hello and welcome. Mr. President, board, and Ms. Shannon. Uh, the only uh, one can, thing can that I'd like to... just state your name for the record, please? I'm James Retzik, uh, Michigan City Historic Thank Society you. President. Uh, just one real quick thing. Uh, there is two storm doors, the east and west storm door. Kirk, uh, if you remember, you and I talked about that. Cool. Uh, also, uh, I would like to mention... Uh, that the Historical Society would like to chip in $10,000 uh, for these repairs. Wow. Wonderful. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Thank, Thank you very much. That helps. That's either the gutter or the storm window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and believe, uh, believe me, uh, with the NIPSCO bills last uh, winter, uh, storm windows are a necessity. <laughs> But thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Uh, we're so proud of that building, uh, and it's looking terrific. Thank you, Mr. Retzik, and thank you for your your uh, c contributions continually to this. Thank effort. you. Yeah, just let us know how we need to uh, do that, Chad. Any other comments? Thank you. Any other comments from the public? What would be the next steps here um, tonight and then beyond tonight? Um, tonight we would be asking for the board's approval of the preliminary packet that was presented tonight um, for submission to the State Historic Preservation Office. And then I also need to submit that to the Lake Michigan Coastal Program Grant Specialist for their approval. Um, once we receive that, we're hoping by the end of the month we would get approval from both entities. Um, then we'll start putting together the bid documents. Um, for your approval in November, and if everything goes well, we'll go out to bid in the winter, which I think will drive a better construction cost for this type of work. They can do it indoors. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's really a good time frame if everything plays out to our schedule. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. So Shannon, uh, my question is, we then have to make a decision and okay the basic bid tonight, but we don't have to do the alternatives yet, or you would want to approve this entire packet because this is what has to be submitted. Now, you, we're not choosing the alternatives. We would choose those at the time that we that, open bids. That was my, my next because question. Because they can come in over or under. I right. mean, yeah. best case scenario, our budget can afford it all. It's probably not going to happen. But at that time, we'll pick our priorities to fit within the money. Yeah. That we okay. Have. That, thank you. Um, I, I'd just like to share. We don't have to share this estimate with the state or with NOAA. Yeah, the, this, is, this is for your knowledge. Yes. All they want to see is the drawings. How, how much, you know, they're, they're, they're writing the grant, spend it, spend more, that's your prerogative. Great, thanks Thank for pointing that out. Thank you. Thank There's you. If there are no other questions from the board, do we have a motion to approve the preliminary drawings and specifications for the Old Lighthouse Museum exterior renovation project? I, I so move that we go ahead and okay the, the preliminary drawings as they are. And the costs that are involved with that. to include who they're going to? Uh, we can, it. if um, we can remember downstate somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> downstate somewhere. What and to the grant, that? the people granting us the money. It would be the State Historic Preservation Office, as well as um, Indiana Department of Natural Resources, Lake Michigan Coastal Program Grant Specialist. Can you want to include that, Kent? I think we should include, yes, we definitely have to include that. <laughs> Very good. I would second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you again. Thank you. Great to move forward. 
Chin, and any table business that we need to address? No, sir. All right, we'll move right on to new business. And the first item is the Walker Street Community Garden Memorandum of Understanding. Jeremy? Yes, and that is in front of you this evening. Um, it is... Um, Language-wise, the same MOU that we had um, this past year um, for this project. Um, it's just, again, another year. Each year we, we put another MOU together. So the only thing that changed uh, within this MOU are the dates. Um, and Attorney Pachardo has reviewed um, and, and approved the language that is in this MOU. <clears throat> again, I, think, I believe we, uh, we also included um, kind of a um, overall summary of, of the project what's been done in 18, what's been done in 19, some, some photos as well. Um, an outstanding project um, going very well at, at Walker Street uh, Playground. Uh, the community has taken a, a very active role in this, um, and it's something I, you know, obviously highly recommend uh, the board approves uh, so we can continue this program moving forward. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions from the board? <coughs> Uh, the only thing that stood out to me, it was on the very first page of the memorandum of, memorandum of understanding, the very last sentence, the, if action to correct such substandard performances is not taken by the Parks Department within a reasonable period of time after notification. Do we have any definition on within a reasonable period of time? Hoping, of course, this would never come up, but that was just one thing that caught my eye. I, I, I don't have that definition. Um. No, there there isn't a definition. Uh, but, you know, what's protected is uh, the fact that either party gives notice to one another. And I right. mean, usually when there is a problem and either someone from our staff or Jeremy finds out, notification is taken care of once we know. And that's a reasonable standard. Uh, there's, there's no way to put an actual definition on it because it just it's a fact by fact scenario that something could happen. Okay. And Jeremy, I'm sure you're fine with the park department responsibilities on item four, the seven items. Yeah, and then we've been carrying these out with the previous MOU and um our throughout the course of this project I should say. Yes, Great. I'm very confident. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the board? I'd make a motion that um, we approve this memorandum of understanding. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. All right, the next item is the Water Tark, I'm sorry, Water Park Renovation Project, MOU. Yes, and another uh, MOU we're uh, hoping to enter into with um, the CDBG um, is they have, um, we have received a word that um, funding has been approved um, in the amount of $250,000 uh, for the renovation um, of Water Tower Park Playground. Um, so within this packet, um, what we are looking to do um, with this, with these dollars and with these grant dollars, um, and is it a non-matching non grant, um, which is very nice. Again, that $250,000 would be uh, coming to the Parks Department and to the community um, for, for purposes of, of renovating this park. And what we are looking to do um, is hopefully all this entire list, but I will um, explain it for those uh, listening, uh, providing play equipment that is ADA compliant, getting input from the neighborhood on what amenities residents would like to see in the park, add toddler play area with ADA safety surfacing to the tennis court area, providing a park design that is acceptable to the neighborhood and is ADA compliant, installing four ADA compliant parking spaces with unloading zones in the park, add an ADA compliant drinking fountain along with ADA compliant route to the playground, and add an ADA accessible picnic area shelter to the, next to the playground. Um, so we did add, um, add a map for visual as well on here that kind of uh, displays that. Um, as you know, the current, what we'll call the tennis court area, um, is un an unplayable surface um, from a tennis court standpoint. Um, so, and this also will, um, the thought process when Shan and I looked at this and, and, and viewed it was, it would also move the playground a little bit off of the road uh, from a safety standpoint. Um, so we thought it would, would a good central location of the park um, and, and allow us to um, work, you know, a short area where we could cut out the um, parking space area with a short jog over there to the, to the new, what we would look at as the new playground area. Um, so 
Um, but happy to obviously, you know, um, take any thoughts or um, comments from the board on this as far as uh, design, if you will. But our anticipation for this would be a design build project. So we wouldn't um, be spending um, some of this uh, $250,000 out um, in design and engineering fees. Um, but we would say here, this is, lay it out, this is what we want. Um, this is the kind of equipment we're looking for, and then they would price it out, and we would be able to, similar to the last uh, project that we, we were just listed, we'd be able to pick and choose kind of what we were able to fit in within that budget. Um, we are also hoping, um, if you notice, the dates on the MOU um, do have 2021 on them, um, and that is um, uh, done purposely, um, even though we would receive the uh, funds potentially in 2020, um, we are hoping, depending on what it would come back at to look at some matching dollars. So at least give us a, a longer window, or uh, I guess expansive window. That way, if we do have to do the project in 21, if we do, are we able to get more dollars? Um, we can complete that. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Any questions for Jeremy? Um, I I remember that this was the area um, where we had that tragedy where five-year-old Delaney lost her life. I was wondering, I believe in the aftermath of that, uh, crosswalks were added and maybe additional signage. Would, when this park is shifted in location, do we know if there's a plan for a new crosswalk to be added so it would be closer to where the new park is and the new safety signage added in there too? Yeah, we did look at that, um, or at least Shannon and I did. Um, I think as we move forward, we would need to bring in um, the police department, traffic, street department, um, just looking at that. There would, with how this is set up, there would have to be probably some cutouts of our sidewalk um, for ADA accessibility. Um, the the issue becomes where the sidewalk and where the access from across the street mm -hmm. comes to the park. So right now they're where it, they're supposed to be. I don't know if our design really changes that or not, um, okay. but I need to, I guess, seek out um, external input on that. Okay. I'd also like to make a comment. Um, I just wanted to let the board know that um, many things were discussed as far as moving the current playground equipment. It's built up on a sand wall with some really bad landscape timbers around it. And we did contact a contractor that said um, the tennis courts can be patched where they're cracked and used as the foundation for the rubberized surfacing. The concrete itself is the largest cost of putting in the surfacing before you even get your equipment. Um, so by repairing these and using the space, it will save a substantial amount of our budget for extra amenities for the park. Okay. Thank you, Shannon. Any other questions? Jeremy, I understand this is preliminary, the drawings. Uh, with it being so close to the baseball diamond, uh, is there any concern with foul balls entering the proposed playground area? Or is there fencing where the tennis court was that could remain to help mitigate that risk? Yeah, we believe that um, for the most part the fencing is in fairly decent shape. There's also um, a very large tree canopy um, between the, the ball diamond and, and the tennis courts, uh, tennis court area. Um, and furthermore, it's not used a whole lot. Um, there's some sandlot games, things like that, kids from the neighborhood that do come out there and play. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's heavily utilized. But even when it is, I believe it between the tree canopy and the fence, it allows for enough of a buffer zone um, for from a safety sample. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the board? I would um, make the motion that we approve the memorandum of understanding. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Moving right along, the 2019-2020 Adult Volleyball League rules and fees. Jeremy, please. Yes. And uh, Abigail apologizes uh, for not being here this evening, but she is currently in her uh, budget meeting from her from her other side of, of the uh, events coordinator uh, position, events and rec coordinator position. So um, with that, um, all fees are the same as they were in uh, this past year in the 2018 and 19 season. Um, for the lead director being compensated uh, $10 per hour, um, officials will be paid $22 per game, and uh, the team league fee uh, for each team 
this four hundred dollar four hundred and twenty dollars per team. Um, I believe she also attached her um, facility requ uh, rental request form that was sent to Michigan City Area Schools. I have. <clears throat> I did run into uh, Dave Williamson from the Michigan City Area Schools, and that has been verbally approved. I'm just waiting for that contract, but we're good to go with Michigan, <coughs> excuse me, Michigan City Area Schools this year again for our volleyball program. Um, we're hoping to uh, expand. Last year we had kind of a down year. Um, we kind of rotated our nights. Um, that's really the only thing that changed. By um, putting the women's on uh, Tuesday. Um, as opposed to they were Wednesday last year, so we're hoping that uh, sees a spike in the numbers. And speaking with uh, uh, Jim Kinsel, our uh, Jim Kinsel Jr., our adult uh, volleyball director, he thinks that that might help us. So we did talk about that in the last year, moving in this year. So we'll see uh, numbers increase. Um, but again, a, a long-standing program uh, for the, with the Michigan City Park Department. Um, I look forward to carrying into another year. Thank you, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Jeremy? Just uh, the gym at Barker. I'm familiar with those. The co-ed and the women both play on Tuesday. Do they just each need one court? It all depends on numbers. Um, we would also have the ability to um, put in additional requests if numbers dictate um, to use Krieger as well, because um, that we've used that in the past. Um, so we can always go back to Michigan Area Schools if needed. But yeah, they would. You know, we could keep them on two separate courts. Um, we, we we go on sideways yeah. out on the right, main yes. court. Um, so yeah, so they would both play on the same night, assuming our numbers stay comparative um, or close to what they've have been in the past. Any other questions? Jeremy, is, are all the other rules and documentation the same as prior years? That is correct. Thank you. Any questions from the public? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve the 2019-20 Adult Volleyball League rules and fees? I would move we accept the rules and fees. I will second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, report of officers. Jeremy, superintendent's report, please. Uh, I believe we have one resolution. Oh, thank resolution you. Resolution number 900. Thank you very much. Resolution number 900 is next, and this is moving funds within the administrative fund, fund number 2056.502. With um, an equal amount being decreased out of seasonal salaries of eighteen thousand two hundred eighty-eight dollars and household supplies of one thousand twelve dollars, and increasing three funds of electric six thousand seven hundred, water seventy-five hundred, and sewage fifty-one hundred. So again, it's just moving funds around to match our actual expenses to what we had budgeted um, a year or so ago. And that's resolution number 900. Any questions or comments? <coughs> Any questions from the public? If none, do you have a motion to approve resolution number 900? I would so move that we uh, approve resolution number 900. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you. And now, Jeremy, if you could uh, give us a report. That Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, what a wonderful day we had this past Friday um, after... Uh, Braving all the uh, the downpour and the weather, um, which uh, caused some soggy conditions, um, but we had, the mayor had his uh, annual golf outing at the Michigan City Golf Course. Uh, total of 36 teams or 144 golfers were out there. Um, over 70 um, raffle items were donated from uh, business community and, and um, local, uh, I guess, uh, shops and taverns and and the like. Um, we had about anywhere from two to three hole sponsors on every hole so again very good community support uh, for the mayor and his and his annual outing um, and roughly twelve thousand dollars was donated um, to Michiana Humane Society uh, so it was an absolutely phenomenal outing um, obviously you know I want to thank the mayor um, and his uh, his assistant uh, Kaylin Kubik uh, for putting on the outing uh, but we really couldn't do it without Randy uh, Chris and Jared out at the course um, I was out there to help and assist put signs out in the morning, got there about 6.30, and the uh, skies decided to open up uh, shortly thereafter, um, and I've not seen that much rain come down in such a short time. Uh, we had standing water on greens and middle of fairways, um, places on that course I've never seen water stand. Um, we, had, we did an hour delay, and by the time we got out there, uh, for the most part, it had soaked in, and, and the course was just beautiful all day long. So um, it was wet, but it was still beautiful. And, uh, of course, again, it's just absolute phenomenal um, 
condition and, and shape and uh, something I didn't know if I'd be able to say this year after the, the spring that we had and, and the conditions that were out there. So, again, kudos to Randy and his staff. Uh, just a reminder to the uh, board that uh, we do have um, our finance committee um, budget meeting, uh, budget hearing with the city council finance committee um, on Monday, uh, September 23rd, and it'll be at 5 o'clock p.m. across the hall here in the ELC room. Um, so if you're able, um, please uh, uh, come and join us. Um, it should be, it's usually a, a very uh, interesting evening from the standpoint that we're able to explain um, the park department um, and, and what we do and the um, issues that we face from a budget standpoint. Um, some of the things we're able to do, some of the things we're able not to do, um, but it usually spars a good conversation that um, has helped us in our, uh, I guess, in our uh, objectives and uh, and goals in the past. So I'm really looking forward to it Monday night. Uh, we have a wonderful event uh, that we're uh, partnering on uh, coming up Saturday, September 28th, the Creekness Stakes. Um, it's our third annual Creekness Stakes. Um, uh, Trail Creek Watershed uh, is part of Trail Creek Week. Um, and uh, yours truly uh, will be out there rowing again. Um, second place is not acceptable like it was last year. Um, so I've, uh, we're doing training four nights a week with our team. And uh, we're hoping to, uh, to take home the trophy this year. Um, but if, if uh, you are able, uh, registration is at 9 a.m. Um, and then we usually start beginning 10, 10, 30-ish. Uh, depending on how many boats, there's a couple heats. And then there's a final... Um, final sprint off, if you will. Um, but again, just a wonderful day. Uh, a lot of community involvement, community partnerships. Um, Shannon is very actively involved in this. Um, she does a phenomenal job um, of keeping the park department um, actively involved in this as well. Um, but if you if you have time, even if you, uh, we are still accepting registrations. Um, I do have the flyer here. Um, we do have them uh, located um, on our website as well as um, out here on the desk um, down here at the basement of City Hall. Um, but but. Uh, but we have more boats to fill, so so if you have a, um, a team of nine, um, it's a it's a thousand dollars for a full boat of nine people. Um, so I think you can divvy that up or find a sponsor um, and come out there because it is a really really fun day. Um, I know we have uh, received some inquiry in the past um, regarding the old bandstand or what I term the gazebo and a lot of the lights being out. Um, we have um, replaced all of the lights. Um, that, have, that are out. If there is a light out right now, it's because we have a bad fixture, a bad socket that we're looking into replacing. Um, so I know some of you have, been, have had community members reach out to you, as have I, uh, letting us know in the evening, you know, lights have been out. So right now, everything is replaced, um, but those couple that, that we're looking into replacing those fixtures are those sockets. Um, with that being said, um, you know, we've you know, uh, the city has just done the project and take, making everything LED and things of that nature. Um, this is something we really need to look out, look at for that area of the park and for that uh, facility um, moving forward in the future. It wasn't a part of, of that project. Um, so um, instead of continuing to spend money, <laughs> you know, um, I would love to look at that restoration of that, which we have in the past. This was several years ago, and um, I want to say the number was, I mean, this was stripping down, repainting, LED lighting. Um, I want to say it was somewhere in around the $180,000 mark, I believe it was, is when we got that quote many years ago. So I'm not saying we necessarily do that, but I, I instead of continuing to, to replace bulbs, and, and um, I would really love to, to really look at redoing that lighting of that facility. So that's just a side note on that, but um, they have all been replaced. Another good note, um, a good uh, piece of good news is uh, we received um, official notification that the Hobie Cat 16 and 20 North American Championships have been approved to be held here in Michigan City um, September 14th to the 20th of 2020. Um, if the board recalls when uh, Mr. John Neckis um, approached the board last year, or earlier this year, I should say, like last year, early this year, for uh, the, a couple of the regatta races um, and the Hobie Cat races uh, for this year that, that were held and were, were successful. Um, he also uh, asked for um, approval to apply for the North American Championships. So um, we, um, it was received, and uh, I did get the letter via email today. Um, that I will forward to the board, um, just for your knowledge. Um, but that's that's really neat. Just another another event to can you know help put Michigan City um, on the map and keep us and, and bring us back into that circuit. Um, I think has been very um, very crucial for us. With that, um, we did have a follow up meeting um, with all the emergency response agencies. Um, and uh, Mr. Neckus and his team um, about you know what went right, what 
went wrong? How can we better um, just the, the regattas and, and our local races next year? Um, and then started talking about the North American Championships if we got received final approval. Um, so I just want to thank all the emergency response agencies for being at the table because um, we won't be able to do um, what we do without them. So I would, would like to thank them for that. Um, with that, I do not have any vandalism, thankfully, to report this evening, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you, Jeremy. How, how much did you say the mayor outing raised that went to who? Roughly twelve thousand dollars to the Michigan Humane Society. Thank you. I'm not sure the exact dollar amount to the to the penny, but it was a roughly twelve thousand. Uh, Jeremy, that and Monday, I put is it five o'clock or five thirty for the budget? Five p.m. Five, okay. And, you know, I guess thank Mike Eldridge for uh, putting in a facility so you guys could practice rowing uh, <laughs> during the week. <laughs> Jeremy, do you have any idea how many boats are anticipated to participate in the 2020 regatta? Yeah, so they, he, he's anticipating anywhere from, I believe it was 75 to 90, I want to say is what the number was. Uh -oh. 75 is what's sticking out in my head because he was looking at 50 to 60, 45 to 60, 65 for um, just our, our one in June. Um, and then he's looking at as well as probably the one in September. And then um, with, for the for the North American Championship, he was up more 75 to 90. Wow. So, again, that's just anticipated. We'll see what happens. But uh, but it's, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, they, they get pretty excited about it. So it's good to see. And they love Michigan City. Fantastic. Great to hear. Any other questions? If not, we'll move on to uh, the liaison reports on the Planning Commission liaison, and we have not had a meeting since our last meeting. Uh, Port Authority, Mr. Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. And Mr. Lang, Zoo uh, Society. The Zoological Society uh, uh, met last Tuesday, and uh, some of the things that uh, were discussed and uh, what was mentioned uh, you may remember there was a block party on Barker Avenue between Three Sheets and Knuckleheads uh, Bar. And uh, they had a dump tank and they had a 50-50 drawing. And from that, uh, $500 uh, went to the Zoological Society, which was uh, extremely uh, appreciated. Uh, we also talked about the, the gift shop. And I had mentioned, I think, at our last meeting how... <coughs> I know that there's a lot of money being spent on the zoo and the feline house is going to be very, very expensive. But they had mentioned that uh, last year the gift shop uh, sold $151,000 worth of items. And out of that they had a, a profit of somewhere between forty and 50000 uh, right now they are on track to pass that. Right now they're at 148000 But they had mentioned that the gift shop gets so packed, particularly when there's a group of, of kids from schools, that there's barely room to move. And in some cases they'll, they will lose some sales. And so just in the, and they said to me, and just remind the board if there's a possibility in the future, if there's money available, ah, if there's money available, that would be wonderful. But they, they said they need to increase the size of that gift shop because uh, it's very profitable as far as, as the zoo and what's going on as far as contributing to the, the zoo itself and the animals. Also, they said there were times so far this, this year that they had to uh, open a second concession stand uh, to actually take care of the overflow when they've had uh, uh, numerous buses come in. And I, I have been down there at times when there were 20 buses. Oh my. And you think all of those people uh, coming into the zoo at one time, uh, there is a, a, lot, a lot of room for uh, sales to be made. The kids love to buy little things that remind them of the zoo. And uh, in the future, if it's possible, uh, just to keep that in uh, the back of your mind, if there's some way that we could increase the size of that, uh, it would be beneficial to everyone concerned. So that is the one other thing. Even though the zoo is not closing yet, and it won't be until in October, but it will reopen on the 1st of April, just in case you are making note of that. Uh, June the 13th, for some of you who may be interested, June the 13th will be brew at the zoo which is a very popular item, and the zoo run will be on July the 12th of next year. 
So that's what went on at the zoological site immediately. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. Uh, uh, for those of you who do not know, you can beat the rush uh, in buying things. For $100, you can support an animal, and they send you your choice of stuff, tiger, lion, bear, whatever. So send your $100 check in. You don't have to go shopping. <laughs> well said. I got a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. We'll move right on to the attorney's report. Um, Mr. Del Chargo. Don't have anything tonight. to report. Thank you. Any director's reports tonight, Jim? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Department of Finances. Mr. Lang, please. All righty. Michigan City Park Department claims docket for September the 12th, 2019. Municipal, $86,088.03. Uh, the zoo endowment, $214.38. Total claims, $86,302.41. And I so move that we make this claims docket of 86302 41 Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Payroll number 19, uh, dates of August the 25th, 2019 to the 7th of September, 2019, with a pay date of September the 13th, 2019. Total payroll of $64,318.28. And I so move that we make this payroll. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Under gifts and donations, uh, this is from uh, Ronald Consiglio, uh, miscellaneous zoo donation of $100. And uh, we have to okay that, so I'll just make a motion that we do accept that donation from Ronald. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Under minor transfers, uh, we have a decrease in fund number 2056.502, uh, administration household supplies of $827, and an increase in uh, fund 2056. Uh, Line item 421, other health supplies, office supplies rather, $27, and an increase in that same uh, fund of 2056, uh, administration other supplies of $806. So they're just moving things around. We also have a decrease in uh, that same fund, 2056, uh, administration uh, telephone, $3,000 and an increase in uh, that same fund, 2056, a different line item, line item 435, of electric at $3,000. We also have a decrease in that fund of 2056.503, recreation seasonal wages of $979, and an increase in the same fund, 2056, uh, recreation seasonal wages over time of $979. So they're simply moving things from one place to another in that, in that same fund. And I uh, so move that we uh, okay those minor transfers. Uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Under zoo endowment invoices totaling $214.38 were paid to Lowe's. This was miscellaneous building supplies. And I move that we make this payment on the zoo endowment of $214.38. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Under the Board of Works, invoices totaling $30,780 were paid at the Board of Works meeting on September the 3rd of 2019 to ServiceScape. Uh, this was Millennium Plaza Irrigation. Invoices totaling $3,716.76 were paid at the Board of Works meeting on September the 9th, 2019 to Primera Engineers LTD, uh, Singing Sands Phase 1. Again, $3,716.76. These were paid at the Board of Works meetings on the dates that I indicated, but we have to also recognize that we uh, saw this and that we okayed this. And so I so move that we uh, make this recommendation. Second. And make this as a, uh, as a recognize, recognizing that uh, we have okayed this. I still second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Under credit card charges, there are none. Ooh. 
And that is the end of the report. Thank you. Any comments from the public tonight? Seeing none, any comments from the board? Jeremy, I did have one comment. I was in Maloney on the plaza walking around. It looks nice. Uh, the, the additional plantings, the irrigation obviously has been fixed. Um, it looks good. I, I'm assuming they're finished with all their additional plantings. Yes, they are. Yeah, they, they did just finish. They had some <coughs> stuff that was on backboard and they ended up fixing it. So, yes. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, welcome. Good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is Ed Sawa, and I'm at 204 Hilltop Avenue, and I'm a member, I'm a uh, board member on the Sheridan Beach Homeowners Association. And I wanted to just go over three things with you. Uh, uh, Mr. Rodgeford, you and I talked at the last planning commission after the last planning commission meeting, and I had, uh, we had talked about uh, three different things, and since then I've written an email, um, and it addressed the replacement of the lights at the gazebo. And, and and I heard that uh, Jeremy had replaced that or took care of those. And Jeremy, you and I have communicated too via email. And I want to thank you all for what you've done there. Uh, I think it's, it's it's great that you've got those replaced, and, and I think it's as good for the park. Um, so that's the first thing. And the other thing uh, is I uh, want to thank you both for responding so quickly when I sent an email to you, Mr. Lodgeford, and how I think the next morning, I think I had a response, and then Jeremy, you were right there with that too. So I want to thank you for responding so quickly uh, to emails that are written. Um, and then and the other two things we had uh, addressed in the email was the replacement of the lights along Washington, or Lake Shore Drive there along Washington Park, the replacement of those lights, and then the replacement of the trees. And I know there's some emails on there, that, or some comments on the emails that I've received back, but I just wanted to at least put those out there, I guess, you know, regarding the tree replacement, or regarding the light replacement. So that's all I have with that. Thank you, Ed. Okay. In regard to... Sure. And, and uh, I appreciate you coming this evening, and I appreciate the dialogue back and forth sure. as well. Um, I will let you know that the uh, new city forester has been hired. Um, Shannon and I have sat down and met with her, um, and that was one of the topics was the, the replanting of, uh, well, the removal of the stumps and the replanting of the trees um, along Lakeshore Drive. So they're... She's just getting familiarized with her budget. There was $50,000 that was received um, this year um, for trees around the city. And it's my understanding they're putting in additional dollars for 2020 as well. Um, so she's re trying to dig up what the previous city forester had, if there were plans. Um, doesn't know if it even got that far. But we did let her know what, uh, what our vision was um, and what we'd like to see replanted. And then also other parks. Um, you know that that we oversee obviously um, of those areas as well. So um, that's going to be a, a fluid dialogue moving forward um, because we definitely want to see something replaced in that area and in other areas of our park. And in regard to the lighting along the Lakeshore Drive, um, we're still in search of funding, and we're going to continue to search for funding because I think it's it's a needed amenity, especially as it gets a little darker in the evening. The, there's a nice path to walk through there. It's and we need lighting, um, so we're not giving up. We don't have it yet. We're going to keep searching. And I've got a few other ideas for that that I can't share right now, but I'm working on it. Thank you for all that you do. Okay. You're welcome. And, and thanks, Ed. It makes it easy um, when there's a, a civil dialogue that we can have with uh, homeowners, uh, Sheridan Beach homeowners, with yourself. Uh, it makes it so much easier to try to tackle and solve these problems the way you approach it. And I'm just grateful for uh, your participation in coming out tonight. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other comments tonight? All right, our next meeting is Wednesday, October 2nd at 5 o'clock right here. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved.